Greetings nerdy list aficionados and you were here for the hottest female superheroes that we don't understand. So I'll get ready for the hottest, the wettest, the moistest, the slipperiest, the most delicious. Do you want me to keep going? Cause I can, I can make this more uncomfortable. Super villains, so thick your brain will melt. <laughs> Okay, seriously, we're gonna be looking at some villainesses who are hot, but I'm gonna be taking it more from a who's that girl perspective. Some of these villains have slipped under the radar, while others are a bit more prominent. I tried to pick a variety of hot, so there's something for everyone. So get ready for the juiciest, the cheat clappingiest top 10. It's the top 10 hottest female supervillains we don't understand. Number 10, Malice from Marvel. There are multiple characters who have held this name. The first two Malices were Black Panther villains attached to Killmonger, but the version I'm going with is Sue Storm's evil split personality. Sue Storm is the fourth incarnation of Malice, the third was a Ghost Rider villain. So Sue Storm, the invisible woman, was manipulated by the psycho man into having the negative aspects of her personality manifest. You know, the bitterness of the years of neglect from Reed and also her miscarriage. At the time, her second child, that pregnancy had not come to fruition. This would be later semi-retcon and they would succeed in having a second child, though it would be difficult and this would be Valeria. However, Sue was very hurt by all the things that were going on. Slowly she began to change, her powers were upped and she began to use them more offensively. She also changed her name from the invisible girl to the invisible woman. She also got a sexier costume and well the people weren't having it cause she was a mom after all and moms aren't allowed to be sexy. Marvel is a no milf zone, or rather taste Milfs. Honestly, part of the malice explanation came in response to her costume. A boob window, cleavage, cleavage at all. <sighs> A lot of this could have been explained as her anger and her grief, but no. Also, Reed slapped her across the face after playing into her insecurities that he is well aware of, but at the time was just choosing not to be a better husband. This is to snap her out of it. Now, Sue Storm is attractive no matter what, but Malice had all that evil going on. Sue still fights her in her subconscious sometimes, but we aren't getting that boob window back. Number nine, Lady Deathstrike. Do you like your ladies enhanced, murderous, out to kill? Then introducing Lady Deathstrike. She first appeared as Deathstrike in Alpha Flight number 33 back in 1986. Before that, her first appearance was as a character was in Daredevil number 197 back in 1983. Her original name was Yuriko, and she hates Wolverine, and her hatred of him drove her to become Deathstrike. Though this was after she had first tried to take him down. She was enhanced on Mojo World, actually. Deathstrike has a dangerous thing going on, but still with plenty of cleavage. She'll kill you, but you'll get a nice view while it happens, and that's what matters. In all seriousness, she's a cool character, and the design is cool. The giant fingers, the samurai-inspired garb, it's a look. Some say she's just a female Wolverine, but to them I say how dare you, that's X-23. She's managed to find her way into adaptation and her vengeance and rage will make her a character remembered for years to come. Number 8, Nocturna. So Nocturna had two origins, one pre-crisis and one post. The pre-crisis is from Batman number 363 back in 1983, and post-crisis is from Robin number 100 in 2002. Both versions dummy thick. One of her aliases is Mistress of the Night. She's a very blink and you'll miss her type of character. I mean when you come back as a villain for Tim Drake and his solo outing that's bound to happen. She was actually supposed to be adapted into Batman the Animated Series, the seminal series from the 90s, however she proved too risque. This was because she was going to be a vampire. They approved of the hot model, that's a quote, but the bloodletting and showing blood and showing Batman lusting for blood because he was going to turn to a vampire briefly in the episode, that was too far. It was a kids show and at the time showing blood was still a taboo. Now they show blood all the time. Still, no matter the era, one of the focuses was always on how hot she was. She was also friends with spoilers, Stephanie Brown. That's not saying that it is a spoiler, that was her name. She's not really a huge focus, but come on, people want their thirst. A little vampire pun for you. Number 7, Scandal Savage, a recent addition. She first debuted in Villains United number 1 in 2005, created for the supervillain team The Secret Six. She's the daughter of Vandal Savage and some Brazilian woman. And she's a lesbian. I'm not just bringing that up to bring it up. Her creator Gail Simone brings it up all the time. And in 2005, it was a big deal. She has the deadly skill set, the costume with the crop top, making 
making it fashionable for this era. The cleavage, the peekaboo mask. Scandal was an interesting character. The whole Secret Six was a fun comic that brought out the best in its characters. It gave the world a credible Catman again, and a cool Deadshot. It was going places, but it was sadly swallowed up by the New 52 reboot, and Scandal kind of fell by the wayside. Gail Simone got swept up to write Batgirl and retconned her legs, which she was long salty about, then moved on. Scandal, easily collectible in a few trades. Number 6. Cheetah Arguably the most well known Wonder Woman baddie, Cheetah has something for all the furries out there. I'll take this list places. You want hot, I'll give you all the hot. Kelly is scripting hot men right now. I believe I heard her call Wolverine a tiny knuckle of muscle. Now what you may not know is that there have actually been 4 cheetahs. We're going to be looking at the 3rd cheetah, Barbara Ann Minerva. She debuted in Wonder Woman Volume 2 number 7 back in 1987. Before that, Cheetah was just a woman in a costume. <sighs> Amateurs. Her origin is actually pretty tragic. She was an archaeologist who took part in an ancient ritual as she believed she would gain immortality. It involved a female cheetah guardian. She drank human blood, ingested the berries of the plant god, or Urz, Urz Targ, Uzkart. Or is Cartaga, which I had to pause to say, it's quite the name. But here's the thing, the ritual was supposed to be done with a virgin, and well, she wasn't one. This resulted in her part transforming in a way that was part curse and part blessing. So she was left in pain in her human form and with a crazed bloodlust in her cheetah form. So she was doomed to wander in this way. Obviously she chooses her cheetah form far more often because she doesn't want to be in pain. My question has always been, where are her nipples? I mean, I know why they're not there, censorship. But it was always weird to me that you don't see the nipples, I mean on furred animals you can see them. They should be there. Or they should just give her a jumpsuit. Oh look, they gave her a jumpsuit. Also, there is a male cheetah, but pff, this is not hot male villains. No, get out of here, Sebastian. Number five, Silver Sable. She first debuted in The Amazing Spider-Man number 265 back in 1985. She is not Black Cat. Sometimes people mix the two up because they both have white hair and they just assume that somebody got a costume change. No. Now she can be an anti-hero, but is most often a bit more on the villain side. Do you like the 80s? Do you like headbands? Do you like a woman who shoots first and asks questions later as long as you're not the one being shot? Then get excited. Silver Sable actually has an annual diplomatic dinner with Doctor Doom. Their nations border each other. Hers is Simcaria. She does all that she does with no superpowers. She hunts Nazis, but will also kill for money. She was inspired by a pack of safari cards that the editor Tom DeFalco bought, so her team was called the Wild Pack. She was popular enough for a time to be adapted into the 90s animated Spider-Man series. But over time, she's kind of faded. We have other hot lady mercenaries, but you needed to know about Silver Sable. You're welcome. Number 4, Typhoid Mary. She is genuinely an awful villainess. She first debuted as Typhoid Mary in Daredevil number 254 back in 1988. She's kind of sympathetic, we'll get to it. She started as a Daredevil villain and would expand to become a Spider-Man and Deadpool one as well. She raped Deadpool, never forget. I certainly haven't. She was a former lover of the Daredevil and has some low-level psionic abilities. Typhoid Mary is genuinely unstable, and she was actually created accidentally by the Daredevil when he was trying to take down a brothel and was stunned when the woman in it attacked him. He accidentally knocked her out of a window, and so she vowed never to let a man hurt her again. In fact, she would hurt them first. Typhoid Mary has ranged and has multiple personalities, with the Typhoid one being one of the most aggressive. She also kills domestic abusers, only the men though. Listen, she is genuinely bad, but they always draw her super hot, so hottest. I mean, when I did Scary Aliens, you all didn't want to believe Starfire was scary because she was too hot. Well, Typhoid Mary is hot too. Are you going to take the risk because she's got a two-faced thing going on? Just so aggressive in this video. I'm really passionate about evil hot women. Number three, Giganta. Are you all here for the Vor, the giant lady? Do you like a lot of women that you have to look up to even to see her waist? Well then, here comes Giganta. She first debuted in Wonder Woman Volume 1, Number 9 back in 1944 and was created by William Moulton Marston, so you know that there was some level of kink involved. The man liked what he liked and wanted you to know about it. She was an ape who was mutated into a beautiful and giant woman. This was her first origin. Her newer origin is a bit more complicated, but still involved a gorilla and mind transference. Here she eventually transfers herself into a strong woman named Olga, who has size changing abilities. People are into Giganta. She's been adapted numerous times. I found her through the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. Number 2. Nightshade She first appeared in Captain America number 164 back in 1973, and used to be called Dr. Nightshade shade and deadly nightshade. Discovering as a young girl that she has a knack for science, she decided to use it for evil. She focuses on creating a werewolf army, yes. And you know what she's got going on? Pheromones. She could use them to control men through science. She forced Captain America to fight Falcon, and also just help her in general, but he resisted real hard. She has also created a serum to turn men into women, and as always, she is on that werewolf army game. Cap Wolf. She's a mad scientist who loves bikinis and thigh high boots. She has more of a costume now, but she's still out there manipulating to get what she wants. 
These old panels, I love them so much. Exploitative? Hell yeah. The confidence to wear that? Envious. She can turn a man into a werewolf and then just head straight to the beach. That's convenience. And of number one, Star Sapphire. I'm talking about Carol Ferris. Again, there have been multiple Star Sapphires, but we need Hal Jordan's waifu for laifu. Make this the cringiest video of all time. She first appears as Star Sapphire in Green Lantern Volume 2, number 16, back in 1962. At first, she is chosen by the Xamarons, enemies of the Guardians, because they want to prove that men are inferior. Her costume evolved into one of the deepest v-necks of all time, and got even more hilarious when the emotion spectrum started and every pink, or I'm sorry, violet lantern had that costume and they were all ladies. They try to explain this as, oh, anyone can join, but most men are not worthy. Okay, sure Jan. I demand Kyle in this outfit. The world needs it. Officially, not just as fan art. Look it up. It exists. Star Sapphire is a hero now for the most part, but for a while she was a recurring villain and the persona was buried deep within Carol's mind. These costumes, they're a look. Charting their evolution is a trip. So those were the smexiest, the most delectable, the thirst inducingiest female supervillains. I have no problem with lists like this. I just find it funny to script them as if I'm the wolf from Little Red Riding Hood. So do you want a part two? I'll go there. I'll find more adjectives. I'm Sasha. Thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more nerdy lists. Hit that bell notifications so that you never miss a vid. We'll see you again soon here on Top 10 Nerd. Bye-bye.